These are the three kings from OM system. The 17mm, 25mm and 45mm f1.2 Pro lenses. And let me tell you why they have earned the trust from demanding photographers like myself and whether they are for you. Let's go. Hi, it's Jimmy Chang here from Red35. Today's video isn't going to be an in-depth review of these three lenses. In fact, I've done them already. And if you want to check out individual review of any of these lenses, or all of them with sample photos, I have the links in the description below. Today is a follow-up video on my recent outdoor portrait shoot with these 1.2 lenses. In that video, I demonstrated these lenses with Marta, give you a ton of sample photos and video clips so you can see how these babies perform in an outdoor portrait environment. And if you haven't seen that video, the link is right up here. Oh yes, at the time of making this video, OM System has a special offer on both the EM1X and the EM1 Mark III. And you can basically get the 25mm or the 45mm 1.2 Pro lens for almost nothing. Yep, nothing if you buy any of these cameras. I have the link in the description if you want to take advantage of this offer and remember, once they're gone, they are gone. And if you watch this video after December 2022, then, well, sorry, you may have just missed the boat. Many have questioned before, and of course, still debating the fact that Olympus made these three focal lengths in two completely separate groups. The expensive pro-grade f1.2 Pro lenses and the more affordable f1.8 set. It is confusing, I know because Olympus has somehow made the F1.8 trio so good that many believe that there is absolutely no point in getting the F1.2 Pro lenses for three times the price. So this is my task today. Hope I can clear a few things up and help you decide whether you should get these 1.2 Pro lenses or settle with the 1.8 premium lenses instead. There is no question that these triplets are built to the highest standard from Olympus or OM system now. Full metal barrel with high grade glass elements. And not to mention that they're all IPX1 weather sealed. In contrast, the non-pro 1.8 version are built differently. The entry level price tag means that they are designed and constructed more affordably. Both the 25mm and the 45mm are plastic. While the 17mm is metal, it is slightly more expensive than its brothers. None of the 1.8 lenses is weatherproof either. So taking photos in the rain is definitely not advisable. Although I have done that before, but don't do that. You might ruin your warranty. <laughs> and lastly, the glass elements inside these lenses are not the same quality as the pro lenses. And I will talk about them later. Don't get me wrong though. All of these lenses are solidly assembled and they're all really, really good and only material use to differentiate them. Handling is a subjective and personal matter. So let's talk objectively. Slower lenses are and always will be smaller than faster lenses. And this is once again physics. The diameter of the front entry point dictates how much light goes through the lens barrel and eventually hits the sensor. The larger the entry point, the more light enters through the lens and the faster and bigger aperture value the lens has. So a 1.2 lens is always guaranteed to be bigger in dimensions than a 1.8 lens. And this is why it depends on photographer's needs. One may choose one over the other and there is absolutely no right to wrong here. Technically speaking, an amateur travel focused photographer may prioritize smaller size and lighter weight and sacrifice some optical performance. But a professional like myself, or if you're a very serious photographer, then you will prioritize performance over anything else, as we often get challenged by available light and weather conditions. Because of these reasons, the choice is dependent on the type of photographer you are. If you're a travel photographer, for instance, you may have a lightweight system such as the OM5 or pen. Then a lighter weight 1.8 lens will go very well with this setup. A pro will have a more comfortable and rugged camera like the E1X or the OM1. 
then these 1.2 lenses will fit better in terms of handling. Again, it's all about you as a photographer. I have already said that you can't go wrong with any, I mean any of these lenses, whether it's 1.2 Pro or the 1.8 lenses. However, there are some technical differences. Premium gray glass elements not only cost more, but they also have higher light transmission index that accommodates more complex optical designs, minimizing light loss through the lens barrel. And remember, the amount of light entering the lens front element and exiting the rear element is not always the same. Some loss will always occur. Therefore, a great performing lens is often measured by the difference in this light transmission loss and also affects the corner performances, aberrations, and sharpness. This is why large aperture pro lenses are expensive, but also higher performing comparing to slower consumer optics. Lens coating is another step to ensure minimal optical defects such as aberrations, ghosting, and flare. And better coatings are once again used in higher grade pro lenses. And finally, the optical design itself dictates other attributes such as distortion, optical characters such as rendering, and bokeh. And yes, all these MG Core 1.2 Pro lenses does have a very unique feather bokeh rendering that wins so many photographers' hearts, including myself. With these in mind, you can see why the 1.2 Pro lenses are in a different league altogether. And I can say that I have both the 1.2 and the 1.8 set, and I use them interchangeably depends on my priority and situation at the time. But in most cases, I use the 1.2 Pro lenses, and I can, of course, use the 1.8 version. But as you can see from my last video, the 1.2 Pro lenses helps to give me the highest quality results critically in any lighting and weather conditions. So for demanding photographers, these Pro lenses are easily justified, but you can't argue the attraction from the capable and more affordable 1.8 Brothers either. When I switched over from Canon to Olympus back in 2016, 25mm 1.2 Pro was the first Olympus Pro lens I got, as the 17 and the 45mm 1.2 were not available yet. And during that time, I used the 17mm and the 45mm 1.8 instead, with great results. But when I finally got the 1.2 Cousins, I immediately saw the difference. Not just because of the, <laughs> the price I pay, but the actual improvements were visible and tangible. You can say this in many things in life. A simple car can get you from A to B. A bigger engine car can get you there quicker. A more luxury car gets you more comfort during travel. And a sports car gets you there in style and they all transport you from A to B. So ultimately, it really depends on your priorities and needs. A demanding photographer will be happy with these 1.2 Pro lenses for sure, and a capable photographer will be satisfied with the 1.8 lenses. But from all the years I've been photographing, there are only a handful of high-grade professional lenses with unique optical attributes that can be abused daily while maintaining consistent quality results. Hence, I call the 17mm, 25mm, and the 45mm 1.2 Pro lenses the three kings. <laughs> That's it, folks. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And let me know your experience in photography, your views of what I just said. How many of you have both the 1.2 and 1.8 lenses? Have you tried any? And what's your experience in them? Anyway, you know what to do now. Give me a thumb if you like this video and give me a sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. <laughs>